This is Wretched Radio with Todd Friel. Well, here's something I thought I'd never say. That bite of Honeycrisp apple was awful. Never thought I'd say that. This is Wretched Radio. I'm convinced that the fruit that tempted Eve first, then Adam, was a Honeycrisp apple. Can't prove it. Nevertheless, I'm sticking with it. They're that good. But I just took a bite of one, and it had it such a... a little wormy? No, well, I had a, it had a deep, nasty bruise in it. And I didn't know that because oh, yeah. I take these ridiculously large bites from a Honeycrisp apple. And so I just consumed the whole bruised part. And it was like, yeah, yeah, yeah. even a Honeycrisp can't, can't fix the toxicity of a bruise. Today's feeding tip is brought to you by, I, I was going to say Preborn or Tomorrow Club, but I wouldn't want to impugn them in any way, shape, no. or form. This is Wretched Radio. You can get a hold of us two-way, 1-877-282-BEEP. That would be ways, plural, ways. 1-877-282-BEEP, or you can send an email. Uh, idea at wretched.org. Let's get to it, shall we? By the way. Well, by the way, yeah. you missed a really good, bad, really bad sermon illustration there about how good the fruit looks, but how bitter it actually tastes. Yeah, you're right. Yeah. I I missed that one. You're right, Joey. <laughs> really bad. <laughs> you're correct. I missed that one. Speaking of communication, an awful lot of people responding to the actually two things that I, I thought were I, I just I know there's all kinds of people who have access to website stuff, but nevertheless, I just was really, really, really pleased, happy when I was reading the comments about the comments that we made about Martin Luther King Jr. I just really, I, I was just, it's like people thoughtfully responding, engaging, you know, a couple of snarks here and there. But overall, it was like, yeah, theology is more important than anything. We, we've got to be right and solid on this. By the way, speaking of Martin Luther King, Joey, do you have that thing with Vody Balcom by any chance? Uh, yep. yep. I don't know if you've got that thing or not, but I do. This was Vody Balcom at a Q&A. Just, I, I think this got sent to me, so I'm not looking to beat the horse, but here's Vody Balcom. There was a man who has a monument now in Washington, D.C. That man was a neo-Marxist and a socialist and a pastor and a tremendous orator, and his name was Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. He was wrong on the gospel, and he was wrong on worldview as a liberal Marxist socialist. But he left a tremendous legacy. Among that tremendous legacy is another pastor who bought into his neo-Marxism, who is more of an open Marxist than King ever was, who has identified himself as such, who taught black liberation theology faithfully for a long time. And for 20 years, he taught that neo-Marxist black liberation theology to a man by the name of Barack Obama. And now that man is in the White House doing what his pastor discipled him to do, which was exactly what he saw modeled by the leaders in the generations before him, one of whom now has a monument in Washington, D.C. These things don't happen by accident, and they don't happen overnight. What do we do with that? We recognize that. Did Vody just say that the legacy of Martin Luther King Jr. regarding rights issues is, didn't actually happen? Didn't? No. Mm -mm. Once again, this, this comes back to discourse. And it, it hasn't been great lately, especially in light of the MLK 50 business that took place with the Gospel Coalition. Just let, let's, we're in Christ. Last night, just for yucks, I was reading through Galatians 3 with this in mind. Galatians 3, it's, remember, he's dealing with the Judaizers. You don't, don't listen to them. You're under grace. You're not under the law. Don't forget, the law drives you to Jesus and it continues to, to guide us, but we're no longer under the power and the authority of the law, your grace people. And when you have been brought into that, I'm going to use the word gospel, because frankly, it's getting so abused these days, shamefully. When you're brought into that, all the distinctions gone. We recognize, I don't have a toot about somebody who's a different skin color or gender or socioeconomic status, because I, 
My individuality is gone. My identity is now in Christ. And if you're in Christ, your identity is gone. And look at how we get together. That's what the gospel does. Knowing that, knowing that there are differences of opinion on this, there's different life experiences, whether it was stories told or experienced yourself, there's going to be different perspectives on the racial issue. Can we just talk about these things? Dare I say, can we all just get along in Christ? Can we speak in a way that, that isn't, if, if, I give, if I give a point, I've seeded the argument. No, you haven't. You can give a point. You can say Martin Luther King Jr. did some great things. You can say that. It <laughs> doesn't, doesn't mean that his theology is suddenly right. And conversely, you can look at his theology and realize he was way off. The virgin birth, the deity of Jesus Christ, and a physical resurrection. That's outside of orthodoxy. Now we can talk to one another about these things, can't we as Christians? We are not on the Sean Hannity program. We're Christians, and we should be talking better. I realize it might not be a ratings bonanza, but we're not doing this for ratings. We're doing this to win people to the Lord when we're talking to unbelievers and to love one another and live in unity and to have iron sharpening iron, not iron stabbing other iron. By the way, speaking of stabbing, you just can't write this stuff. Great Britain, the statistics are that the number of people who are getting murdered by knives is actually exceeding the number of people in New York who are getting murdered with guns. London's mayor declares intense new knife control. You can't That's why the Europeans are so quiet on Facebook. Write this. Knife control. In other words, knife laws to stop the epidemic of stabbings. Yeah. It's designed to keep these weapons of war out of the hands of Londoners looking to cause others harm. Pumping nearly $50 million into the police department so they can better arm themselves against knife attacks. Give them a gun. <laughs> Because the Bobbies in Britain, they don't get to carry guns. They will also be given, check this out, targeted patrols. I think that means they're going to just pull over people randomly with extra stop and search powers. Well, then, that yeah, sounds like a profiling yeah. to me. The mayor of London tweeted, no excuses. There's never a reason to carry a knife. Well, actually, there are lots mm. of reasons to carry a knife. <laughs> <laughs> it could be for protection if you're not a murderous thug. You carry it for protection. Maybe you're one of those people you got to clean your nails regularly. Maybe you like to have it when you can't get that twine undone and you want to cut it. Maybe it's just to get into pretty much any medication these days you need a knife. I can think Maybe of some reasons. Chef. Or you're a chef. Anyone who does will be caught and they'll feel the full force of the law. By the way, Mayor Khan is responsible for decreasing the number of stop and searches, having previously declared the tactic racist and potentially Islamophobic. It's also cl not clear what local Londoners will now use to cut their food. <laughs> That's really not funny, but it is. It's irony on a stick. You just have to keep going with this. You have to lock us all in a padded cell to not find something to harm another human being. Ask Abel. He was beaten to death by a rock. And we all know what happened, what Adam and Eve did after Cain killed Abel. That's right. They raised. I'm glad you said it, because that's not what I was thinking. I was going to say they oh, mourned, they were really oh. sad, they saw the effects of sin. Oh, Shame no, on you for deep. taking... Are those tire marks on my back? <laughs> no. Bus science. <laughs> you were face up. Well, now we're going to have a bus ban. Because they could... That's right. Well, they could. People drive cars into groups of people. As I do believe we discussed yesterday... Psychiatric no medication or needs needs to be. You could use a mallet. Okay. You could use a mallet. Let's get to the emails, shall we? Uh, this is from. Um, 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 um. Hello, I'm from Lebanon. Yes, them. This is from Philip. I'm from Lebanon. War in Syria. Millions of refugees entered my country, homeless. 
had no supplies for the essentials of life. This is a good conundrum. Get ready for this one. My church has a ministry involved in giving supplies from the United Nations to the Syrian refugees, thousands of them. Been doing it for six years. However, many started to attend the church from a Muslim background, way cool, baptized some of them, but at once, as soon as we stopped giving them food or other supplies, they stopped attending. So the dilemma is, should we really be doing this? And the answer is, if you want to, of course. If it's legal, do it, because it's kind, if you can. Every church can make those decisions for themselves. Can you be using that to bring them in, show Christian love, and preach the gospel? Absolutely, and you can do that despite or with lacking fruit, apparently, from it, but you never really know, do you? Because it's the kind and right thing to do. Remember, our job is to be faithful and kind. It's God's job to do the converting. So if you want to, carry on, Lebanon. I, I wrote that. This yeah, is Wretched Radio. Thank you very much for watching one segment. You can listen to three more, well, if you can stomach it, for free at wretched.org, iTunes, Android, whatever your listening device is. If you have a plate in your head, you can pick up the program from anywhere around the world. Thanks to the ongoing monthly support of our gospel partners. Should you be one of the people who has listened to the program for an extended period of time, meaning more than once, would you please consider becoming a gospel partner so we can continue to proclaim the good news of the gospel? Simply visit wretched.org.